Hi everyone. So uh, we're just waiting for everyone to join in. Can you please confirm who all have joined in? I have Tanay with me, and uh, uh, who else is there on the line? Hi everyone. Uh, everyone yeah. Who is that? Please. Hi Ritu. Okay. So Ritu is here. Tanay is here. Uh, who else? Okay, hi Varsha. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, are you able to hear me, Varsha? Hello. Yes, are you able to hear me? Uh, there is some uh, interference at the back. Yes, Druti. Uh, I think Druti has also joined in. Yeah, Druti, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Excellent. I've just not received a confirmation from Varsha. Uh, who all are there on the YouTube channel? Can you also please post post in the comments? Uh, you know your presence. Yes. So all those who are there in the YouTube channel, also, if you can just quickly comment your presence in the YouTube channel, I think that should help. Uh, Shraddha is, yeah, one second.
yeah all those who are on youtube can you please confirm your attendance as well uh, in the comment section just comment in in the section if if there are enough people who are on the youtube uh, then i can actually you know just uh, you know keep youtube or changes so, druti you are there on youtube right yes, An uh, okay anchita is there on youtube aditi is there so people who can be there on the youtube yeah yeah so just keep one of those you know yeah yeah don't be on both of those channels you know you can just be on either youtube or skype because that will help you as well yeah so just be on one of those so that i also am able to coordinate pretty well you know okay let me check if there are a few more okay uh let me see if i am able to add shraddha okay so i think people are people are here uh yeah anyone who is still left out shreya i did add right uh shreya i just added shreya's but i don't see her live here oh shreya is here right okay okay so shreya is here okay good so i think uh, almost all of you are there so we'll just quickly uh, begin now we have lost uh, some time in all of this what i'm going to do is i'm also going to share my screen accordingly what i quickly want you guys is to type out you know rather than speaking it out type out all all the topics that you want me to really look at anirudh uh, we are also there uh, on the youtube so just people who were not able to join on youtube or had a problem is are on skype but don't bother everything is there on youtube and we should be able to connect here as well so here's a quick request for uh, all of you is that either type in the uh, people who are there on skype firstly you know can you just uh, switch off your uh, mics microphone so that you know there is no background noise and everyone is able to hear me that's one point number 2 is uh, just quickly type out in the chat section of skype or in the uh, comment section of the youtube channel what is the topic that you would want me to really look at uh, firstly i'd also like to know once again what is the syllabus that you have for your uh upcoming test although we had done a few of it uh last time but just a quick uh, uh, synopsis someone can just type out the entire syllabus uh while uh, others uh, who those who need a revision for, uh, you know who need some specific topics to be looked at you can do that else i will take up topics on my own uh, discretion but if you have any specific topic that you want me to look at we can do that as well yeah i okay nature of matter the okay so someone is saying nature of matter structure of atom uh, okay i would also if someone is sharing structure of atom or something uh, please also try and uh, tell me a specific uh, 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 topic in structure of matter you know because it's a uh, what exactly in structure of matter would you like like me to look at chemical reactions okay okay chemical reactions is something okay so all the youtube guys can also see my screen now right so i'm just going to keep on toggling between skype and uh, the screen so that everyone knows nature of matter structure of atom chemical behavior chemical bonding okay we can start those um, people who are there on youtube let me see what what is it that you would like to look at uh, 
So can you please teach valence shell electron repulsion theory? Okay, chemical bonding, right. So I think we have enough of the topics uh, majorly with us now. Uh, chemical bonding is there are some more topics, hydrogen bond explanation, environmental chem, uh, that's the syllabus for the exam. Okay, that's the syllabus for the exam. Okay, I got it. Redox reactions, sir, hydrogen bonding, hydrogen bonding explanation. Perfect. So let's begin with the easier topics and then slowly as we warm up, if there are a few more people who want to join in. Shraddha, are you there? I was just concerned that if Shraddha was there or not. Shraddha, are you there? Okay, so it's... Okay, so let me quickly see if I'm able to add Shraddha because she had a problem joining early. So... Yes, there it is. Now I think Shraddha can also be here. Okay, perfect. So I think all of you now can are able to see on the YouTube channel as well as uh, the uh, you know Skype. Uh, you are able to see my screen perfectly. Uh, if anyone has a problem, just simply feel free to text me uh, or just you know pick up the call and call up. You know that's also okay. Uh, what we'll quickly want to look at now is uh, the uh, different topics that you've mentioned. I'm going to just write all these topics here so that we are able to cover. So we will be covering hydrogen bonding. Uh, we will be covering uh, chemical uh, hydrogen bonding. And then we will also look at uh, what are the different Vespar theory, valence shell electron, repul electron pair repulsion theory. Okay. Uh, we will also look at uh, uh, chemical behavior a bit. Okay. Uh, so that's that's something we will look at. And uh, what are the other topics that people have suggested? Mainly chemical bonding, reaction and behavior, uh, hydrogen bonding. Okay. So there are chemical reactions is oh, structure of atom, some, something on structure of atom and nature of matter as well. Okay. So structure of atom, structure and uh, of atom. Okay. Nature of matter. Uh, nature of matter is okay. That we, uh, people on YouTube, are there any comments here? So chemical bonding, okay. So balance shell, okay, perfect. So this is the topics that we'll start and we'll look at. Uh, let's begin with hydrogen bonding because that's the easiest that you can really look at. And uh, uh, now, now let's understand, you know, uh, uh, so, so what really a bonding is, you know? So whenever we say that there is a bond, we actually essentially mean that there is a transfer of electrons or there is a sharing of electrons, transfer slash sharing of electrons okay now let's understand all of the forces that are existing in now, now here's, here's one point that I, all of you i want you to really note is uh, this is going to be a pretty concise and an intense class so uh, wherever you are sitting i want to you to have a pen and paper with you as well as please pay attention to every small topic and every small uh, uh, you know uh, para paragraphs or or uh, you know content that we really discuss on the idea is uh, you know uh, one of the good things about learning online is that uh, there are very few distractions and there are very few wastages of unnecessary uh, time you know time or uh, energy so it becomes pretty con uh, intensive so what i just want you to note down is very broad point and since i will also be writing a lot of stuff uh, it will be convenient for you to also take down notes Take down the keywords. These keywords are the things that really fetch you marks in your exam. Uh, you have already given your paper. I've looked at your paper, and it seems that you have been doing good. You know, they are they're pretty fair enough. You know, uh, I uh, there is I, I can't complain much. But having said that, uh, one of the uh, important aspects that I would still like to say is that your structuring of the answer. A lot of you have been able to really just replicate what is there in the textbook, but maybe there is a conceptual uh, weakness in, in, in the understanding. So today I'll try and really focus on these two parts as to how do you write your answers as well as what the concept behind the question really is. Okay, so let's look at hydrogen bonding. Now you see, whenever there are two atoms, any atom, let's say I'm just going to call them A and B. These two atoms, whenever they attract each other, this attraction can be of multiple types. Okay, few of those types are called as bonds directly. Okay, they're called as bonds. And the others are simply called as attractive forces. Attractive forces. Now, what is the difference between an attractive force and a bond? A bond is something where electrons are actually either transferred or shared. Transferred or shared. Okay. Now, we all know that when electrons are transferred, 
then there is there are ions that are formed so obviously when electrons are transferred you have a positive ion you have a negative ion and therefore the bond that is formed is called as an ionic bond ionic bond okay i'm going to quickly show you a demographic of this which is i think very helpful for all of you so here's a uh, uh, different types yeah here's a quick demographic that uh, probably can help you understand uh, let me show you if it's around yeah not really Mm. Okay, so uh, it's not pretty handy. So maybe I'll not spend a lot of time, but I will show you at least the graphics what are involved. Okay, so one second. Okay, so not not really. Uh, uh, we do, we don't have any of the schematics around handy, but let's try and see. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So maybe this. Okay. Now check here. Both the hydrogens are sharing the electron. So this is a typical covalent bond. Both chlorines are sharing the electron. Look at this one electron that is here. They both are being shared. That's a typical covalent bond. when the hydrogen gives an electron to chlorine and then there is an attraction between them that's an ionic bond okay so ionic and covalent are pretty easy to understand so ionic is when the electron is given by the cation uh, to an anion so the one with the positive charge is called as cation okay the one with the negative charge is called as anion okay and both of them when they get attracted so they simply are attracted there is no sharing of electron as such since they are positive and negative charges obviously they are opposite poles and therefore very strongly stuck to each other like magnets this is an ionic bond uh, whereas a covalent bond which is also what we call as sharing of electrons is when the electrons are actually shared by both of them so there is an overlap of orbitals so let's say this is the nucleus and as you can see here i'm going to use a different color whatever you are able to see in red or pink color here is actually an overlap what does this overlap really mean that the orbitals physically there is actual a physical sharing of space between two orbitals and this sharing of space that is there between two orbitals is what contains the shared electrons now and therefore we call this kind of connection as a covalent bond okay so you can obviously understand that in covalent bond the distance between the nucleus actually reduces you know so if let's say r was the radius of this r r1 was the radius of this atom and r2 was the radius of this atom when they actually overlap the distance between the two nuclei this distance is going that is going to be less than r1 plus r2 this is going to be less than okay so r1 plus r2 is going to be greater and this distance r is going to be less than that why because there is an overlap so definitely you know the summation of r1 and r2 is going to be larger and this they will be much closer so therefore the distance will be lesser than the sum of r1 and r2 this type of a bond is typically called as a covalent bond okay now there is another variation that actually happens in covalent bond which we called as coordinate covalent bond coordinate covalent bond this is also a lot many times called as dative bonds dative dative bonds that is d a t i v e s dative bonds what is the difference between a covalent bond and a dative bond the difference is only one thing in covalent bond for formation of a bond there are two electrons shared each electron is given by the contributing party so let's say a is given one electron b is given one electron now both of these electrons are shared between a and b that's a covalent bond this is a pure covalent bond okay now when only b is giving both the electrons so a is here a has its orbital it is empty b has both the electrons one and two both b is giving the electrons to a both the, both electrons are being given by only b so it's a one sided contribution there is no contribution from a this is called as a dative or a coordinate covalent bond dative bond or coordinate covalent bond so what is the what is the keywords here the keywords is transfer of electrons to form ionic bond sharing of electrons to form covalent bond 
एंड अनइक्वल शेयरिंग और वन साइडेड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन फ्रॉम वन एटम टू दी अदर एटम बोथ द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर गिवन बाय वन एटम इज कॉल्ड एज डेटिव बॉन्ड और कोआर्डिनेट कोवाल बॉन्ड कोआर्डिनेट कोवाल बॉन्ड ओके ना covalent bond okay now let's understand once the bond is formed now whatever make the method the bond is formed whether it is ionic covalent or coordinate covalent the bond is formed the moment the bond is formed our atoms look something like this i'm going to just draw exaggerated so it is something like this either this will be overlapped or they might be slightly touching depending on whether it is covalent or ionic respectively but let's say the bond has formed now there are electrons okay which are in the outermost shell and revolving right now now what happens is once the electrons are either shared or yeah uh, yeah once hydrogen bonding i'm i'm going to come there varsha uh, in just a minute I, this is the, all the base to understand uh, the hydrogen bond let me quickly check if there are any comments on uh, the youtube channel as well uh, okay guys okay guys so if you have any any uh, issue you always try and comment on the youtube or uh, the skype wherever you are so that i understand whether you are getting it or not so let me show you how really a uh, 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 you know a polarity looks like once the bond is formed how does the polarity look like right now check this this is a very beautiful example uh, as you can see here when there are two chlorines okay uh, the 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 image that is there on your screen when there are two chlorines both the chlorines are of the same strength there is no speciality in any one of them so if someone says that you know what i want to attract the lone pair towards myself whom should we really give the chance to attract it they both are equal so there is no opportunity for one to attract more than the other and therefore the electron pair is exactly at the center between the nucleus please check these two electron pair the orange one is contributed by the one on the right the yellow one is contributed by the one on the left the left and the right both of them their central portion is where the electrons are staying and since they are exactly at the center no one is special no one is uh, partial and therefore there is no charge on any atom and both the atom are perfectly neutral now check that with hcl hcl very small tiny poor guy chlorine very fat big guy c simply bullies hydrogen hydrogen says boss i have given you my one electron we wanted to form a covalent bond chlorine has also contributed one electron they ideally would want to have a covalent bond everyone wants to have a covalent bond unfortunately one is so stronger than the other that he simply pulls all the electrons towards himself so the ideal covalent bond will now have electrons going skewed towards one atom only for example in this scenario if you can see all the blue is the negative charge the blue is the negative charge and the red is the positive charge if you see the electron cloud is very fat on the chlorine whereas the electron cloud is very thin on the hydrogen so and these electrons are also not exactly at the center they are more closer towards chlorine nucleus and therefore poor hydrogen gets a delta plus charge not plus charge please note it is not a plus charge it is a delta plus why delta plus delta plus means partial delta it means means partial positive it is not a completely positive charge why it would have been a completely positive charge if hydrogen would have been able to give electron completely to chlorine but that's not what is happening you check with sodium sodium has given the electron completely to chlorine even if it wants to attract it it will be able to attract only 0.1% maybe 0.01% but not very more uh, you know larger than that therefore the sodium has got a completely positive charge and it has become completely red red is positive charge blue is negative charge whereas hydrogen here was not able to give it completely therefore it has been able to have only partial red cloud and chlorine has partial blue cloud this partial charging is called as polarity so when electrons shift towards one atom uh, uh, in a biased fashion that is when we end up getting polarity okay so 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 that's one uh, so now let's understand what decides this polarity obviously you might understand that this polarity is basically decided by anyone who is able to attract the electron strongly towards itself so chlorine is able to attract electron strongly towards itself and therefore it is making the bond polar but chlorine is able to do that only when it is relative to something else chlorine cannot do the same with another chlorine but, but this chlorine can bully hydrogen this chlorine can completely beat up nitro, uh, sodium so here he is simply bullying hydrogen 
here he is beating up and thrashing up sodium to give the electron now what makes this difference this difference is what is based on what we call as electronegativity what is electronegativity electronegativity as a definition i'm going to write this down for you so that you also have so this is what i was talking about electron pair they simply get attracted towards one side when they get it gets a partial negative and positive side if it completely gets shifted then you get ionic bond where there is a negative charge here and a positive charge here this is what we spoke then we said why this happens is the first thing is because of electronegativity electro negativity okay so what is this electronegativity electronegativity is the ability it is the ability of a atom to attract to attract the shared pair of electrons the shared pair of electrons electrons towards its nucleus where is it attracting towards its nucleus and where when can he attract in all the times no he cannot attract in all the times only in the bonds that it makes wherever he is able to so it is it is the ability of an atom to attract the shared pair of electrons towards its nucleus in a chemical bond in a chemical bond okay so that is electron negativity right so electron negativity is the ability of the atom to attract electrons towards itself okay perfect now we have understood acha there is something called as a polar covalent bond that happens the bonds are not really just simply ionic or covalent for example this is a completely covalent bond this is a completely ionic bond but there is a bond which is in between them which is polar covalent bond now coordinate covalent bonds simply can be completely polar or uh, sorry can be a polar covalent bond or can be non polar covalent bond also the only difference of a coordinate covalent bond and a covalent bond is only one guy has participated the rest all properties are the same very much like a covalent bond there is no difference a covalent bond and therefore it is also called as a coordinate covalent bond okay all the other properties remain same except that the contribution of both the electrons are simply by one guy okay good so now we have understood this now let's understand what is hydrogen bonding okay now this is all we spoke about bonds but apart from bonds there are also attraction forces that exist between atoms see atoms are nothing but a, a simple uh, you know a, a, a sphere of charges it is simply a, a, a blob or you know just just like a woolen cotton wool you know like uh, having a woolen cloud of charges around it so if that is what charge uh, atoms are then of course all of these happening inside the atom like we saw the hcl atom so this was our hydrogen and this was our chlorine there is a delta plus charge here there is a delta minus charge here now because there is already charge here there is, it cannot it cannot just simply happen that uh, uh just one second uh, guys uh, someone is yeah hello yeah ha uh ha -huh. uh, sir i'm just in a class uh, can i just ask someone to call you please no worries you can you can you yeah yeah sure uh, for for the whole day yeah no worries no worries sir. sorry guys i what i thought it was a query from one of uh, this thing so i had to take it up yeah so so now these atoms that have this delta plus and delta minus signs of course it's not going to just remain silent with this delta plus and delta minus charges around it so let's say there is another hcl around it you know there is another hcl atom around it okay obviously this hydrogen has a small attraction towards this chlorine why because there are opposite charges and now that just because of the vicinity the proximity proximity means being just close to each other just because of the proximity of these partial charges there is an attraction between hydrogen and chlorine and the moment there is an attraction between hydrogen and chlorine they start attracting each other this attraction is what we call as hydrogen bonding so please remember hydrogen bonding is actually a misnomer there is no bond formed it is purely intermolecular attraction intermolecular means between molecules there is also something called as intramolecular hydrogen bonding but that is beyond our scope right now our hydrogen bonding is intermolecular and what do you mean by intermolecular hydrogen bonding 
take two molecules these molecules obviously have some partial charges on themselves because the charges are of opposite nature their natural tendency is to attract each other and therefore there exists attraction between them this is exactly the case that also happens with water you have hydrogen oxygen hydrogen this is a small electron cloud here a very fat electron cloud here very fat electron cloud here and another small electron cloud on the hydrogen so obviously there are two delta plus delta plus charges here and a lot of delta minus delta minus charge on the oxygen because both of these bonds are polar the electrons are very far from hydrogen and very close to oxygen and because they are close to oxygen they impart a partial negative charge on oxygen okay so that's now when such water molecules come closer to another hydrogen and this water molecule this has a delta minus charge what happens is this hydrogen starts attracting the oxygen and they actually in a in a very subtle manner get interlocked with each other when i say interlocked the locking is not as hard bound as these bonds are for example if i have to really break hydrogen and oxygen i will have to give it a lot of energy i will have to really do some mechanisms vigorous practices to actually break the bond but in this scenario hydrogen bonding it is not as strong as between hydrogen and oxygen here but still it is not as weak as well it is also significant to take notice of why because it is this very hydrogen bond that actually you know gives anomalous behavior of water we have discussed this in detail anomalous behavior of water okay behavior of water this is the reason why water actually expands when it actually bring becomes ice okay why because to accommodate these forces our uh, water molecules have to retain hexagonal rings and earlier in water these hexagonal rings could be tied up with each other they could you know intermingle but when they actually become uh, completely solid they have to arrange themselves in a perfect manner like this one behind the other okay when they have to arrange like this obviously they will need more space than what they would need it need in water so therefore the water actually the ice actually expands this is one of the reasons for hydro this is one, one of the reasons because of which happens because of hydrogen bonding this hydrogen bonding is not just notorious here the hydrogen bonding is also notorious in when you for example dissolve hcl in water hcl dissolves very readily in water also because of this hydrogen bonding there is an hcl molecule you bring another h2o molecule here and this hydro this hydrogen starts attracting the chlorine whereas this hydrogen starts attracting oxygen and you will find that there is actually a attraction between them okay so the, so hydrogen bonding so what are the basic uh, necessities of hydrogen bonding the first necessity is hydrogen attached hydrogen attached to a very electronegative atom attached to electronegative atom okay the second requirement of hydrogen bonding is that these hydrogens should have partial charges obviously so when it is attached to an electronegative this is actually an outcome of the first itself but they would have partial charges okay so that's that's the second second thing that we can really look at okay now the th so these are the two major reasons because of this uh, because of which hydrogen bonding actually exists there is one more very important aspect that uh, i would also like to share is uh, these hydrogen bonding uh, hydrogen being a very small tiny atom uh, there is also uh, because of the size uh, uh, what what makes hydrogen bonding very much possible so the third major reason is that the small size of the atom bonded to hydrogen so that uh, it can effectively attract uh you know the bond pair okay so the uh, size of the atom size of atom is also very important which atom am i talking about the atom that is bonded to hydrogen okay for example chlorine you know that chlorine is a very small why so is do uh, if you remember periodic table i uh, we have not really done this i i think we have but not to such an extent if you go towards right in the periodic table the atomic size decreases so atoms here are very big atoms here are very small tiny and this tiny size actually brings the outermost electrons very close to the nucleus and therefore attracts the outer electrons to the nucleus and therefore smaller atoms smaller atoms please note this smaller atoms are the ones which are very good at making hydrogen bonds or contributing to hydrogen bonds so these are the two uh, basic uh, uh, properties of hydrogen bonds we have also completed all the three types of bonding and we have also completed hydrogen uh, sorry anomalous behavior of water and the various types of uh uh very various types of attractive forces that are possible there are four or four to five other attractive forces that are very important uh, we don't study all of them but we study london dispersion forces at some point okay in our syllabus so i'm just going to talk about them 
so for example london dispersion forces was another theory that was actually invented so that people can explain how helium atoms how helium atoms can actually you know attract each other or how they can actually be in the liquid form if they have to be in liquid form okay now helium is a completely inert atom it has two electrons so no need to do any bonding also it will never form a bond with anyone so no no sense of making any partial charges or polarities or all of that so how do i explain that how would two helium atoms actually attract each other if they have to attract or for that matter even neon or argon atoms attract each other so there was no explanation in the world to give this and that's when the london dispersion theory actually came up so what does this theory say this theory says you know look this is how helium atom is this is its nucleus there are two protons in it and there are two neutrons in it okay now there are electrons around it sorry very bad yeah. there are electrons around it so one electron is here one electron is here now these electrons are continuously moving around in the atom okay great everyone knows that's right now what london dispersion forces say see look you are saying that the electrons are moving so at some point of time what happens is that these electrons actually come up to only one side okay because of all the probabilities that can happen in the universe okay so for no particular reason at some point these electrons are simply at one side of the atom the moment they are at one side of the atom there is a slight positive negative charge even delta delta i would say delta delta not even as strong as hydrogen bonding in hydrogen bonding the electron are actually pulled out of the atom you know to extend the bond uh, to extend the orbital here there is no pulling nothing happening simply because electrons are on the other side of the atom there is a delta delta minus which means a very small charge on this side and obviously there is a small charge on that side the other side will become polar so there will be a delta delta plus charge on the other side now because of these and if there is another helium atom around it which incidentally has this side as delta delta minus and this side is delta delta plus then obviously there will be a very weak attraction between them weaker than hydrogen bonding but definitely existing so weaker than hydrogen bonding but definitely existing attraction this attraction is what they said is what we call as london dispersion forces okay so a very broad view of london dispersion forces there are a lot of details in it but this is i think this should suffice for us to understand how london dispersion forces really work okay so i'm just going to make a quick pause here and i just want to quickly ask if uh, people have any other doubts as such uh, okay good uh, everyone is here and let me check so i have yes i am just coming to that i am just coming to that okay so uh, yes uh, let me i am just quickly checking the hygiene if everyone is there on board and if everything is fine uh, so could you repeat the definition of polarity okay that's uh, shraddha is that what you are asking sir can you send the skype link or the whatsapp on the whatsapp group uh, anirudh uh, skype i, I think i am really getting full with it there is already six seven of them in that so i think only three more seats i think we will continue here that should not be a problem so so long as you are able to understand and uh, uh, me i think you know let's let's keep on continuing it here okay uh, a quick uh, point for uh, shardha's question so shardha is saying uh, uh, sir could you repeat the definition of polarity so the definition of polarity is when the electron pair when the electron pair of the chemical bond so in in a chemical bond when the electron pair shifts towards one nucleus more than the other when the electron pair when the shared electron pair of a chemical bond shift towards one nucleus more than the other,